The forest was home, the trees, his family. Every rustle of leaves, every chirp of a bird was a part of his world. The city boy, Kalu, knew nothing else. The forest was his playground, his sanctuary. He lived with his tribe, their skin dark as the richest soil, their hearts as pure as the forest streams. They laughed, they sang, they lived off the land. Every day was a celebration of life, a dance with nature. Their ancestors had for generations. Stories of old passed down through the ages spoke of their bond with the forest. But the outside world was encroaching. The forest's edge was no longer a boundary, but a battleground. People from the nearby village, with their lighter skin and judging eyes, called them outsiders. They saw the forest as a resource, not a home. They said the forest wasn't theirs. Kalu didn't understand. How could anyone own the land, the trees, the very air they breathed? Weren't they all children of the earth? The forest was a mother to all, nurturing and providing. The village people carried papers, claiming ownership, government papers, they said. Words and seals that meant nothing to Kalu. Kalu's father, the village headman, argued. His voice was strong, filled with the conviction of generations. He showed their own papers, ancient documents marked with symbols of their heritage. Proof they were the rightful owners. The forest had been their home long before any government existed, but the villagers wouldn't listen. Their eyes were clouded with greed and ignorance. One day the villagers came with trucks, machines that roared and belched smoke, alien to the forest's serenity. They began cutting down trees, Kalu's home. The sound of chainsaws was like a cry of pain from the forest itself. His father tried to stop them. His voice was drowned out by the machines. They pushed him aside, their faces contorted with anger. The clash of worlds was brutal and unforgiving. This brutality, this injustice, Kalu had never seen. His heart ached for his father, for his home, for the forest that was being torn apart. Kalu's father, defeated but resolute, gathered himself. He knew they needed help, help beyond their small tribe. He had heard whispers of people in the town, people with uniforms who upheld the law. Police, they were called. The journey was long and tiring. Kalu had never been to the town. The noise, the crowds, the smells, it overwhelmed him. They found the police station, a large building that seemed to stand taller than any tree in the forest. Inside, a man sat behind a large desk. He wore a crisp uniform, a badge gleaming on his chest. He listened intently as Kalu's father spoke, his face stern yet understanding. Power, Kalu thought. This man had power. The officer promised to help, his voice steady and reassuring. He spoke with authority, his words carrying weight, and everyone listened intently. Kalu felt a glimmer of hope spark within him, a feeling he hadn't experienced in a long time. He looked around the office, at the papers, the files, the seriousness on everyone's faces, and felt a sense of importance in the air. He felt a strange pull, a curiosity about the world beyond his village. Later, as they walked back home, Kalu couldn't stop thinking about the officer and the promise he made. He asked his father, Baba, how does one become like him? Strong, respected, and able to make a difference? His father smiled, a hint of sadness in his eyes, as if remembering his own unfulfilled dreams. You need to learn, Kalu. His father said gently, placing a hand on his shoulder. You need to read and write to understand the world and its ways. It's through education that you gain knowledge and power, the tools to change your destiny. Kalu looked at the papers his father clutched in his hand, the papers that had failed to protect their home. He understood the weight of his father's words and the importance of education. The journey to knowledge began. It was a rough and winding path, filled with obstacles and challenges that tested his resolve at every step. The school was a far cry from his beloved forest. The buildings were unfamiliar, the environment alien to his senses. The other children, with their lighter skin and mocking laughter, were a different breed of beast. They seemed to take pleasure in his discomfort, their eyes filled with a mix of curiosity and disdain. They called him names, made fun of his clothes and his language. Their words were sharp, cutting through his confidence like a knife. They said he belonged in the trees, not in a classroom. Their laughter echoed in his ears, a constant reminder of his outsider status. Kalu felt alone, out of place. The schoolyard, bustling with activity, felt like a foreign land where he was an unwelcome guest. He missed the familiar embrace of the forest, the comforting silence of the trees. The forest was his sanctuary, a place where he felt at home. But every time he thought of giving up, 
He remembered the police officer's face, the power he held, the respect he commanded. The officer was a symbol of strength and justice, a beacon of hope in Kalu's turbulent world. He thought of his tribe, of their stolen home. The memories of their displacement fueled his determination, igniting a fire within him. He clung to his dream, a seed of hope blooming in his heart. Despite the hardships, he knew that education was his path to a better future, not just for himself, but for his entire tribe. Like and subscribe to this channel for more entertaining videos.